is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There's no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 50. 16601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. Oh, I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello. No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next-gen perimeter protection, 24-7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield Security System and doorbell camera, all professionally installed, for free. Shield your world, the Sloman Shield. For over 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for EJDConstruction.com. With more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes, Welton Rayum is committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. At Welton Rayum, they don't get paid unless you win. They handle complex personal injury claims caused by the fault of another in both state and federal courts. They handle auto, trucking, motorcycle, slip and fall, and bicycle accidents. Call 954-966-4646. That's 954-966-4646. Welton Rayom can help.
presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM. Make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at Orvieto's Awards. .com, Orvieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. Expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media group, Inc. ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome aboard. It is Monday, April 1st. Yes, sir. April Fool's Day. No, we're not going to be pulling any stupid April Fool's jokes or any of that kind of crap, uh, which people love to do. So, no, we're not going to do that. That's uh, kind of old and silly. So we will just have a regular talk show like we do every single day here on the program. So hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, some good, a little bad over the weekend, unfortunately, you know, but, uh, you know, that's how it goes. You, you try to overcome all that kind of stuff. So we will talk about it today on the program. We'll keep you updated on anything going on in sports, obviously crypto as uh, Bitcoin is holding strong, not at 20, not at 30, not at 40, not at 50, not at 60, but at 70,000. So do we have the explosive week up this week? That will be the question if it's going to happen because we've kind of been dormant the last couple of weeks here, stuck right around that 70 area, which is super strong, by the way. So we'll keep you updated on that. By the way, Bitcoin just closed its highest weekly, monthly, and quarter ever. And Bitcoin has had seven straight green candles so that's seven straight profitable candles never happened in bitcoin never okay i think the last time there was like well not never but like the last time it was like 2012 or something like stupid so it was like at the beginning of it you know uh so yeah um just kind of crazy that look at the numbers and it's seven months Those of you that invested, you know, because you're super in the green already, obviously. Your dollar has gone down 25% in four years. What you bought for a dollar, you only have 75 cents now. Just to do the math, if you want me to do it that way. Bitcoin in the same time in four years has gone up 800%. So we'll continue to uh, look at it, okay? As I tweeted over the weekend, by now, not a financial advisor, if you have a savings account, you're a moron. That's all. Basically, just look at yourself in the mirror and go, wow, I'm really stupid for having money just sitting in a bank when I could have it in Bitcoin and growing. So, you know, not a financial advisor, but I just kind of use common sense. I mean, you know, money doesn't grow. Bitcoin does. So anyway, we'll keep you uh, updated on it. See if we're busting in. It's kind of 71, but I'm not going to get excited until I start seeing like 72, 73. And then, uh, then I think we're headed for the 75, 80 range. It's about to happen. It's about to happen any second now. So all I've, as I've said before, you're only going to wish this dip lasted longer. That's all, you know, and it's lasted several weeks for you to take advantage of it. 
So there you go. Take advantage of the 18% dip. That's 18% of profit they're giving you. Uh, what do we have here on the chat board? Joseph is in. Good win for the Heat last night. Washington, let, let, let's 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 get this over with with the Heat right now, okay? Beating Washington in Portland doesn't mean jack shit. I don't get excited about it. No, I'm just happy they won, period. You beat two scrubs. You beat the dregs of the NBA, dude. Okay, I'm, I, I don't even care. You know, it's like big deal. So it's not a good win. It's not a great win. It's nothing, dude. They did what they were supposed to do. You're supposed to smack the scrubs. They've already lost to these scrubs once this year. So that's what you can't do is lose. Win, and that's it. Winning against them is not impressive. You're supposed to win. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not here to get excited about beating Portland or Washington, folks. I can't. I can't. After the season they've had, I don't get excited for this. Okay? And Bede's coming back this week. You beat Philadelphia. Okay. I'll be impressed with that. You got the Knicks on Tuesday, even though they got their injuries too. Beat them. That's a little bit more impressive. I think the Knicks are 7-3 and three in their last 10. Miami 6-4. and four. So... You know, I, I, Joseph, I can't get excited about, you know, anything that happened this weekend with the Miami Heat. I can't, dude. That's just, you know, that's some bogus shit, you know? So you can get excited if you want. Get excited about being first. But the Heat, well, they did what they were supposed to do this weekend. S Steve Chapman is in. Yes, sir. We're finally into draft month. We'll start getting into some draft coverage here over the next couple of weeks. Um, Jay Gelfin is in good win for the heat and eh, whatever Brian and Nico keep improving. Yes, that, that is true. The Brian pick is actually now making me look good again. Cause I was looking pretty bad because Thomas Bryan did not look like a good pickup. Now he's getting more in, in a groove, but again, they played shitty teams over the weekend. So let's not get crazy. Horn dog is in Aaron Hernandez. That's right. Smash the like button, hit the notification bell, subscribe, do it all. Kyle Cockrell is in. Steven Gonzalez. Yes, the Marlins suck. I can tell you one thing that doesn't suck. The Panthers. Yes, sir. Nice, surpri nice uh, survival against uh, Detroit and winning that one. Cosa Nostra. One-Eyed Jack. Uh, Miles Deep. No Doubt. A-Rod. Gus Gus 1388. Too Extreme. Uh, let's see. Fernando Perez. Ray Sosa. Yeah, I know the Nova stuff. That was uh, that was crushing on Friday, man. That hurt. Coach AJ, Devin Jordan. Uh, we already have lots of April Fool's jokes out there with misinformation and clickbait. Yeah, I'm, dude, I don't do the April Fool's every day. I, 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 I spend my time on this show straightening out the fools that have crazy opinions and reporting so imagine how i take april fools <laughs> oh man uh you know everybody got excited about the old don i'm like yo no deal eminent you know it's just we gotta you know on this show we bring people back to reality you know what i'm saying oh they're gonna trade or or can't wait to sign devin jordan no no Devin, Dalvin Cook, I'm sorry. Dalvin Cook. No, no, they're not. No, they're not. So we straighten out the regular fools. Can you imagine the April fools? <laughs> oh, man. Dude 67 and Brian Landis, Manolo Rivera, Gordon Shumway, uh, Alex Palenzuela. It means nothing. I haven't seen much in the last month. Yeah, no, the, the heat season doesn't mean shit. The entire heat season doesn't mean we got to wait for the playoffs. They don't care about the regular season, dude. Frankie says happy birthday to everyone. And of course, happy birthday to Mama Fresco. Oh, nice. Happy birthday to Mama Fresco. Good stuff there. 
All right, all right, all right. Oh, man. Okay. All right, so we got a... We got some stuff to talk about. Uh, Marlins, by the way, let's uh, let's get the Marlins out of the way because I know it's not much of a, a topic anyways in the big picture. Uh, they got swept over the weekend by the Pirates. Uh, no real surprise. Uh, I think it seems to be a surprise to some of you. I, listen, I get it. You know, the blind ass fan thinks they're, you know, the Dolphins are going to win 13 games every year and they're going to go to the Super Bowl and, they think the Heat is going to win the title every year and, and all that kind of stuff. And I had Marlins fans that were, I don't know why, they were somehow talking themselves into being excited about this season or something. And as I talked about it last week, if they don't make a Panther-like commitment, they've got no shot. They won't win the crowds over. They won't win their fans. They'll never win consistently. They'll never have success in the playoffs. You know, I get it. They shocked the world and snuck into the playoffs last year. But, you know, that's like the best that you can do. And <laughs> to see what happened yesterday with Jazz Chisholm, not his grand slam, okay? Because I think by now, if you question Jazz Chisholm the player, you're an idiot, right? Because he can play. There's no doubt the kid's got sick talent. Is he the most mature player in the world? No. Is he consistent? Not even close. His body, con that's his problem. There, there's one knock on Jazz Chisholm. Maybe two knocks. Uh, one of them is he can't stay healthy. His body is fragile, brittle. It breaks down, you know, him and Tyler Hero are about the most fragile players I've ever seen in my life, okay, next to Yatil Green. But I give Yatil Green credit. He plays football. 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 Not baseball. Not the softest sport in the history of mankind. Baseball. OK, if you can't be durable in baseball. Are you serious, dude? And then maturity, because he's had those issues. And yesterday was another great example of his lack of maturity. So he was asked about the team's struggles especially against the Pirates' bullpen, you know, throughout this series. So let's uh, let's hear the question and answer from Jazz Chisholm, just so we can, like, bask in it for a little bit here. Go ahead, Sean Stanley. Play us Jazz Chisholm and how he looks at the four losses against the Pirates. What's made, I guess, the Pirates' bullpen so challenging this series? No, we couldn't see. That's why I feel like the shadows are really... We're not used to playing shadows. We normally play inside every day, you know? Uh, so when we get a shadow at, for three of the four games at home for the first time of the season, it's kind of hard to adjust to, you know? We're used to the roof being closed and being able to see every at-bat. It's kind of tough to see when it's black out there and facing a guy throwing 101, you know? All righty, Jazz. Last time I checked, hey, uh, Sean, did the Pirates have to play in the same conditions for four games? Just wondering. Yes. Um, will there be shadows on the road? Because they'll play day games in other places, like the Cubs, Atlanta, places that sometimes you will play. Maybe you'll go out west and you'll play Oakland. Well, they're still in Oakland. Um, and you might play them during the day. Uh, Sean, could there be shadows there too? Yes. Okay. All right. So now we know the Marlins will lose all their games with shadows at home or on the road. Now the Pirates, they're shadow tested. See, that's the thing. The Pirates, they were all, you know, they were all given 
UV rays contact lenses. The Marlins couldn't afford it. You know, they couldn't afford Solaire or anybody else, and they couldn't afford their UV rays contact lenses to help them for shadow games. So now we know that if there's a shadow game on the road, Jazz Chisholm and folks can't see. They don't have the proper equipment. They don't have the ability. They don't have it, I guess. And here at home, let's make sure we don't schedule any shadow games. Because if there happens to be a shadow game, oh, my God, Jazz Chisholm is going to – didn't he hit a grand slam? Oh, that was in the first inning. There were no shadows. I see. I see. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. The shadows. So the shadows and the pirates are both 4-0. Marlins 0-4. But a shadow is undefeated. So it's impressive, I got to say. I got to say, so now you know, okay, if it's a day game and there's going to be shadows, home or away, you got to bet the other team. Jazz Chisholm just told you right there, they can't handle the shadows. We're batting with the shadows of the night. All right. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But shadows are a problem now. Yep. Shadows. <sighs> Chase Silseth will be on the mound towing the slab for the Angels tonight. Marlins will have Max Meyer, okay? Uh, one more thing about the Marlins. And, you know, just want to... I, I I don't think Bruce Sherman really gives a shit, to be quite honest now. I'm kind of come to that realization. Um, He just wants to make his money, spend as little as he can and make as much as he can. He's not. He doesn't have the money to spend. So uh, the whole cheerleader and bands and all that stuff outside the stadium and trying to create some kind of atmosphere, that doesn't create atmosphere. Just, you know, Marlins, you, you, you know what you need? You know what you need, Marlins? You need me. You need me. You need me badly. You need me, and you need to bring me into your building and sit me down and ask me, what should we do? What is the right things to do? And I'll tell you exactly, since, you know, I'm born and raised in this town. I'm like one of the few freaks. At 57, very few people, very few people are born and raised in South Florida. Very few people. And very few people like myself, have covered all the teams for 34 years. And four of the five from its inception. Okay? So I'm pretty well versed on what works and what doesn't work in this town. You know what works? Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, Shaquille O'Neal, Ray Allen, Jimmy Butler. You have my drift? You know what works in this town? Pavel Bore. Matthew Kachuk. You know what I'm saying? That's what works. Barkov. That's what works. You know? Reinhardt now. You know, that's what works. Verhage. Stars. People that are a force. You know what worked? Back in the day, for just a short time, because... It's only a short time, but it worked. It worked for a short time. Devon White and Gary Sheffield and Dutch Dalton. And you know what I mean? That worked because you made a commitment, but it was just a little short window. So we just showed up for a short window. 
And when you can go to go see Jalen Ramsey or Tyreek Hill or Tua, um, and then you've got to go watch the Marlins, who really have no stars. Jazz is the only one, but he can't be a star because he can't stay healthy. So he's plus he's afraid of shadows. By the way, does does Jazz Chisholm walk around trying to avoid his own shadow? Anyway, as I digress here, I'm sorry. Um, what sets up the atmosphere here is winning. What, why do you think the Panthers arena is now full? You think it's because they've got a band outside playing? You think because Stanley C. Panthers outside shooting, you know, T-shirts or something? You think that's why they're buying the tickets inside? Just wondering. I don't know. Just wondering. Is, is that what you think it is? Or maybe it's because Inter-Miami brings Messi and Suarez and Alba and Busquets. I don't know. That could be the reason why they're, you know, the stadium's selling out. People all over the world want to see them. Maybe it's because the Heat are constantly trying to win. Maybe it's because the Panthers, once Viola and Sifu finally took over, they finally got real owners that made a real commitment to the players, which in, so, which in turn turns into winning, which then turns into atmosphere. And then you can add your little stupid band and your cheerleaders and whatever else you want to add to it to make it more of a dog and pony show. But first, you need the substance. If you don't have the substance, we're not going to go. And this weekend, an opening weekend, and none of this shit counts. We all know what happens in a week or two from now. 5,000 people will show up. That's all. And you're watching all these silly little pieces that the TV people make about the Marlins. And they'll find a silly fan that says, oh, yeah, the crowds are growing. And that we're, we're, they're getting better. And this is the year. And. Brother, what, what the hell are you watching? So I'm watching all these stories, and it's all it's all that. And Marlins, man, if you just don't have the money, you're not going anywhere. And all this bullshit dog and pony show, none of it means anything. We want substance. And you're not giving us any substance. So nobody's going to go. And they went because it's opening weekend and the whole bullshit of it and all that. And a week or two later, nobody's going to be there to watch them. And it's going to go back to the same shit because you guys are the same shit. Every single time, Miami Marlins, you're the same shit every single time. And if you expect things to change without you changing, that's like me saying, you know, I need my triglycerides and my cholesterol and my sugars to go down. Let me have another donut. Let me go grab another Coke. Let's eat something else fried. Is it going to happen for me? No. No. Now I start eating well. Man, you know, the next time I go to the doctor, he's going to go, what the hell did you do? Because my triglycerides, my cholesterol, my sugars are going to be way down now. You know, now I'll eat a donut every once in a while, not many every day. <laughs> you understand? So you can't expect results if you don't put in the effort. That's just the way it goes in life. Can't expect your relationship to last forever if you're not going to put any effort into your wife or husband. Right? or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it is. Can't expect to get much out of your relationship with your kids. If you don't try, if your kids don't try, right? It's got to go both ways. There's got to be an effort. So this relationship with the Marlins will never work because the Marlins never, ever reciprocate with love. So they want you to love them, but they don't love you back. The Moss brothers love you. They're building two stadiums, and they've bought a shitload of players, including the best one in the world. The Panthers love you. 
they keep finding studs and they keep adding studs to their team. And all they do is get better and better and better. And this is their fifth straight year in the playoffs. You know? Everybody tries. The Dolphins haven't won anything big, but it's not from a lack of trying. And that's all we ask for. And did the Marlins try? No. When Jeter wanted to spend, he got fired. When Kim Eng wanted to spend, she got fired. And now you bring in this fool from Tampa because you want to do things the Tampa way where you don't spend. And you just hope to catch lightning in a bottle one time like you did in 2016 with the Royals and 2003 with the Marlins. Or 2015. 2015. Royals. So Marlins, you can bring out the bands and the cheerleaders and all that bullshit. And I'm sure it was a nice, fun atmosphere this, this first few days, first week, because people went. You might get some fans now because they want to see Otani, you know, right? They want to see the gambler. So, you know, I get it, but yeah, you know what's going to happen. And by the way, the Pirates suck. You got swept by a shitty team. The Angels aren't any good either. So you got a break that you're playing two easy teams to start the season and you're 0-4 already. That's also not a good sign. Just want you to know the Pirates suck. So, you know, <laughs> it's just really, it's a joke. It just is a joke. And I look at the Marlins and I'm like, you're just a joke of a franchise, dude. You people don't care. Anyway, that's uh, my piece on that. Uh, I'm following the Braves this year, says Dude67. Marlins are the A's. Did you guys see what the A's did this weekend? So instead of going in the ballpark for their for their strike and all that stuff, they were outside, didn't pay, which I, I ripped them last year for that stupidity. They had an in-game strike, and it's like, yo, morons, you gave the owner the money to get in the stadium. This time they didn't. They tailgated outside. Now, the only thing, listen, I don't care about the A's. They don't, you know, listen, I know what the reality is. Oakland is a minor league town and no longer deserves to have any pro sports whatsoever. It's a poor town. There are certain cities in this country that don't, they cannot support pro sports. Oakland's one of them, dude. <laughs> if you can't support the NFL, how the hell are you going to support baseball? What are you talking about? I mean, give me a break. If you can't support basketball, you know, so your, your, your town is, you know, it's, it's a small town. It's San Fran, not Oakland. Oakland is the redheaded stepchild. So that's the real problem with Oakland. Fiscally, it's a broken down community. I, I've talked to you guys about this. They don't even have money to fund. Listen to me. They're 9-11. Those of you that listen to the show religiously, I've shown you this. Like an officer almost died. I read the story like almost a year ago, right? It was like an officer in Oakland almost died because nobody would answer the 9-11 call. They didn't have people. So you're going to support pro teams, but you can't even support your infrastructure. Huh? Anyway, so that's the real problem with Oakland. So let's just cut the shit, right? And, and so I'm watching the A's fans outside, and maybe there's one or two watching or whatever. Bless you people, man. You love your A's. I get it. Your city's broke. You can't afford a pro team. And Oakland's gone. And by the way, the stupidity of asking the owner to sell when there's another city ready to build a $1.2 billion stadium for you on the Vegas Strip, why would you sell? You're about to make lots of money. As the pet shop boys would say, it's opportunities, baby. Let's make lots of money. Come on. So the owner for the A's has got the brains. The people in Vegas have got the bronze. They're going to go make lots of money. That's what's going to happen. And Oakland is going to get what it's gotten already a couple of other times. The shaft. And that's because you're a broke 
ass city that cannot afford pro sports. So I, what I would say to A's fans is I know the owner sucks for the A's. But I understand that. Your city's much worse. Okay? So the city you live in is really the problem. And just watch as everybody leaves. It's not just a baseball thing. It's a basketball thing. It's an everything. It's a football thing. It's everything. Okay? So, you know. Uh, the A stuff is, I, I find it humorous and sad. Uh, imagine buying a Mercedes with 27 owners. They're, they are the Miami guppies. Well, I, uh, I had some interesting conversations with people and some that are really smarter than I am about this. And they tried to defend Sherman and his 15 other owners. And I said, when you have that many owners, you don't, you, you, there's, you need as, when they took over, what did I say? You, any hardcore? Remember what I said? I said, I want a family. I want a man or a woman. That's it. That's all. I don't need five, seven owners. And that means you don't have enough money. I need a rich ass family, a rich ass dude, a rich ass woman that can just write the checks and not blink. Like not even flinch. I need them to act like I did when Bitcoin was at 16.5. And you remember all those idiots? Remember? Oh, Bitcoin's going on eight or 10. They're all done. They're all gone. None of them even, none of them even came back to the show to say, to apologize, to admit they're wrong. None of them. They all disappeared like cowards. So that's what I need. You know, I need somebody with balls, guts. I need a woman, a man, a family to own the team that says, what, what do you need? Here. Nothing. It's nothing for me. That's when you have the right owners. If you don't have those kind of owners, you don't have the right owners. If you have the owners that got to go to the account every time to penny pinch and figure out things and all, you have the wrong owners. That's all. Uh, radio host is in. Keep up uh, the good diet work. Thank you, sir. Today's athlete is so soft, it's sickening. Well, it all depends. Not all of them, but some are, yeah. John Padilla, NorCal is in. Shadow tested, too. Says he's laughing his ass off. Nico Jones, Big O, going to have to change his name to Slimo soon. Thank you. Thank you. Drago, what a pathetic answer by Jazz. No, it's... Steven, that was embarrassing. Seriously. Miles Deep, Shadow Game sounds like Nicolas Cage gone in 60 seconds games. <laughs> and Miles Deep is about to get a baseball team that NorCal is losing. How about that? I read NorCal, who's an ace fan, and Miles Deep, who's in Vegas. So we we're just talking about it. There you go. A Rod, maybe Chaz is. Poxitani Phil. <laughs> and we just lost him, right? So maybe Jazz can take over for Poxitani because Poxitani died, actually. So, yeah. The Miami Sharks show more heart than the Marlins. I think, I just think the Marlins are bad. That's all. Yearly man is in. He's laughing on the shadows. Aaron Hernandez is LO. I guess you guys got to kick out of the shadow stuff. I mean, it's just, it's a joke. Kevin Grant is in. Yeah, bad start for the Marlins. Yeah, or normal. I had Marlins season tickets until Jim Eisenreich was let go. That was my proverbial last straw. What, by the way, I covered that team. And um, what a classy guy, bro. Jim Eisenreich. What a classy guy, dude. Him and Dutch Dalton were just amazing additions to that locker room. Yeah, Dutch was like a, a fountain of information and education for us. Uh, um, the, the writers and the beat guys like myself would sit down and shoot the shit with him before games. You know, four, four o'clock, something, and he's there sitting there and 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 we'd sit around him and he'd explain shit and, and dude he was awesome and Eisenreich was so good man so good dude 
really. That was uh, that that was fun. That was a fun time. Ninety seven was a season that I'll, I'll never forget in my in my entire life, man. That was that was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I was scared shitless going home. <laughs> I was drenched in alcohol, bro, because I was in this, you know, it was champagneing the entire place. And so you were getting wet and I'm interviewing everybody. And I got my arm around Wayne Huizinga. And I'm interviewing him and I'm interviewing players and I'm drenched. And I got in my car and I went to the studios to put in the sound in the carts. And um, and then I went home. And it was a long drive from my house in Little Havana, from Sheridan out west, because we were we were in the barn at that time, and we were out in Sheridan by um, what's that? Is that is it Bucky Dent Park out west on Sheridan? Is that the one? Is it Bucky Dent? Um, there was a. We had a little building right next to it. There was like a building and a shed, like like a trailer park and a building together, like small. That that's what that's what was Kiss and 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 QAM at that time. We were only two stations: Kiss and Country, Kiss Country and QAM. That's it. Uh, Sunshine Wireless or whatever the hell we were then, um, or maybe we were Beasley. No, it was the early days of Beasley, but we were there. It was before we moved to four forty one, and man, the drive from there to Little Havana was you know easily 45 minutes without traffic and god i was driving the speed limit i was like oh please don't pull me over because i'm not drunk but i smell like freaking alcohol you know what i mean i probably would have gotten away with it because the guy would have noticed that i wasn't drunk and i would have played the tape deck for him and look see i'm i'm a reporter and this and that and all that kind of crap but i didn't get pulled over thank the lord Thank you, Lord. But that was fun. Yes, sir. No, Nico got it. It was Brian Piccolo Park. Brian Brian Piccolo Park. That's it. That's the one. That's it. Brian Piccolo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, I am a Dolphins fan. I don't even need all those stars. Even if the Marlins are incompetent, they just need to show me they care about trying to win. Yeah, but they don't. Bill's fake crowd noise says, "Gotta be careful with the shadow people. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll get you, man." They'll get you. Big O, I'm not surprised by the Marlins, but damn, how do you get swept at home, embarrassed? And the Pirates. Pirates suck. Dave Dombrowski was the reason why Marlins were, oh, yeah, for sure. He built both of the champions. Been away for the show for a minute, Big O, is shrinking behind that mic. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you, Gretel. Billy Shaw in. Ocala Joe. Says, good morning, Orlando. Thanks again for your valuable information and wise advice. You're awesome. You are welcome anytime, Ocala Joe. Um, Ray says, they can make it all the Caribbean or Dominican and, and Puerto Rican uh, night they want, but they're never going to get people to show up if they don't spend and win. Exactly. That bro, they, at the beginning, when they first started, they went and got, you know, rest is uh, the strata. And, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll draw Cubans in. No, you won't, idiot. You know, there's a misconception and there's this um, uh, theory that is so faulty and it's proven over and over and over again. Just because you bring a Dominican on the team, the entire Dominican nation is not going to come watch you or Mexican, or Venezuelan, or Cuban, or Puerto Rican, or whatever it is. Any Caribbean, Central, South American country that actually plays baseball, um, just because you bring somebody here, it doesn't mean they did that with Orestes. Oh, all the Cubans will come. No, they won't, dude. Cubans, Puerto Rican, you're forgetting they're Americans. They're Dominican Americans. They're Puerto Rican American, Irish American, Japanese American, because that's what Americans are. We're from all over the world. But then we become Americanized. That's what happens. So we act just like everybody else does. 
And we go when you give us a reason to go. Not some jingoistic nationality bullshit. It's not what it's about, dude. That's for the Olympics. That's for the Caribbean classic or, you know, that that's that's for that bullshit. That, that kind of stuff, that's the jingoistic stuff. But in pro sports, pro sports, it's about winning. So if arrest is, disa- is a disaster, not the strata, you're not going to draw. But if Livon, I love you, Miami, is winning constantly, you'll draw. By the way, last time I checked, Dontrell Willis was in Cuban, was not Puerto Rican, was not Mexican, was not Venezuelan. But guess what? He was winning. And so he got on a roll. And guess what? Americans went to go see him. African-Americans, Jamaican-Americans, Argentine-Americans, Colombian-Americans, Irish-Americans, all kinds of Americans. They went to go see him. Because they love Dontra Willis and the funky chicken. It's about winning. It's about entertaining. It's about Miguel Cabrera. It's not about loading it up with Venezuelans. Just because Miguel Cabrera is Venezuelan? No. It's because Miguel Cabrera is a Hall of Fame talent. A Venezuelan Hall of Fame talent. That's why. Venezuelans and Cubans and Dominicans and Mexicans and Puerto Ricans went to go see Miguel Cabrera. Because yet, all those Americans love baseball, but they love to see greatness. And greatness is facing Roger Clemens, and he throws it inside, and you say, oh, really? So that's how you, oh, okay, go ahead, try it again. Opposite field home run. That's what draws. You know, that's it's it's really it's it's really not that difficult to figure out what's going on here in this town. And that whole bullshit about let's play the country shit, you're in America. You're not anywhere else. So you don't get an advantage because you bring somebody from a specific country. Okay? Because you can bring a Japanese player and nobody will go see him. If he ends up becoming a turd, um, try to think of like the the frog. What was the name of the the frog that he didn't live up? Matt was it Matsui? Was it Matsui? Was his name right? Godzilla or King Kong or whatever the hell they called him, and he like came with First a whole Hideki bunch of Matsui. I don't know right. if that's referring to right. Hideki Matsui did not live up to the hype, and he got ripped right i think and isn't that the guy that that uh steinbrenner called the fat toad i think am i correct here so that's my point you can bring hideo nomo and we're going to freak out and watch not just the asians not just the asian americans the rest of us Just like the rest of us will love to watch fernando valenzuela look up to the sky and then pitch And we're like, what the hell was that? So it isn't about your jingoistic approach because you're in America now. And so every, pretty much when you have, you know, immigrants come over, which is what our country's built on, okay, they become Americans. And they start doing things that the rest of Americans do. Okay, that's kind of the way it works. You know, so, yeah, is there going to be a little bit of jingoistic stuff at times? Of course, we all support our own. That's just in our blood. That's normal. We marry our own. We gravitate to our own. We hang out with our own. I get it. It's it's just one of those things. But in sports where you got to spend your money. It ain't about nationality, bro. That ain't going to help if he ain't any good or she. Okay. So that's where this whole, you know, oh, we'll bring this person and 
this community will come out in droves. No, they won't. No, they won't. They will not. Welton Rayom, by the way, they will be out there for you every single time. Jeff Welt, Daniel Rayom, they are absolute monsters. 954-966-4646, bankruptcy, homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury. Tell them that Big O sent you. Trust me. They will take care of you, buddy. Uh, it is just something that I, I witnessed it firsthand. Um, by the way, okay, a friend of mine says I could mention it, but um, he took care of him. A friend of mine that listens to the show um, ended up calling Welton Realm, and he had a, a accident. And, brother, once again, they came through big for them. Several of our listeners also have called Welton Realm and have had great success. Okay. And, you know, uh, I know DeSantis did well with that uh, squatters uh, law that he passed. I like that, but he didn't do too well when it comes to our homeowners insurance. They have the advantage now. And so the most important way you're going to get an advantage is by hiring the right lawyers. If you hire the wrong ones and with the, with the new laws, it's going to put you at a major disadvantage. So you may not need them right now. Maybe you need it next week, next month. Maybe you never need it, but you should have the number. Welt and Realm, save it on that cell phone, 954-966-4646, and the consultation is completely free. So if you think you have a case, call. They'll tell you if you do or you don't. That's it. Call Jeff Welt, 954-966-4646. Can Stephen Ross buy the Marlins? Yeah, he, of course he can. Um, but he's not. He's not going to pick up that, that whole thing, that whole mess. Uh, da, 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 I guess we're going to have to give Jazz a new name, the Groundhog. There we go. Or we could just call him Shadow Jism. Or Chism. Uh, Miami needs a winning team. Nobody comes out of the house to see a losing team. That's it. It's all jism is what you get from the Marlins. Uh, regardless, it's a Cuban team or whatever, just a winning team with owners who actually invest in the team. Damn, Big O, came back from my Greece vacation. Oh, dude, you are lucky. To have my childhood upbringing ruined with all these scandals out now, the world is effed up. Are you talking about like uh, P. Diddy and all that? Yeah, boy, the, the stories coming out of all of that is some crazy shit, dude. Big OBJ would be the fourth option after Hill, Waddle, Smith, and company. Yes. Dolphin 13. Yes. Yes, he would be. After Jose Fernandez, the Marlins should have relocated. That's the last time I've seen a Marlins. It's not – they don't need to relocate, dude. We're not the problem. We would support baseball easily. It's just you got to make a commitment. Look at the hockey team. It's now getting full. Why? Because they made a commitment. The owners have been committed, and it takes a while to build up the trust. It took them a few years to build up the trust. Now the trust is there. They've been in the playoffs five straight years. We're not the problem, Gabrielle. Everybody that keeps saying move the Marlins, dude, Major League Baseball is the one that stuck us with John Henry, who didn't want to spend here, but he spent in Boston. Then they stuck us with Loria, who didn't have any money. And now they stuck us with Sherman, who didn't have any money. And yet the Moss brothers were sitting there going, and they're local. They sold it to somebody that isn't even local. Think about that. Think about what Major League Baseball did there. They could have sold it to somebody that this town means something to them. The Moss brothers, I, every time I told people, you know, when people were questioning the Moss brothers because of the you know, the craziness at the beginning, a lot of irresponsibility. They didn't, they mishandled a lot of shit early on. I saw it firsthand, but I kept telling people, I don't care about that. They'll overcome that shit. I've been around Jorge Mas. Okay. They're fanatical about this. They will win. And there they are. And they're going to win when it's all said and done. And they're going to keep trying. They're going to try harder than anybody else. And then you go look at Viola and Sifu and they do the same thing, dude. All they do is they spend as much money as possible. They have entrenched themselves in this community. They have brought stars. 
and they're getting the returns now. And now their arena is packed every night. Now there's an incredible buzz in that arena because they earned it. Marlins don't earn shit, dude. Nothing. They don't earn a goddamn thing, dude. Nothing. Uh, Dolphins won all their location, all their championships at the location where the Marlins are playing. The Marlins won all their championships where the Dolphins are playing. Maybe they should trade stadiums. Uh, maybe they should just get better management. That's all. When the Marlins had great management, like Dombrowski, they won titles because he built the second title team. wasn't It wasn't these idiots. It was Dombrowski. So, and the Dolphins were at their best in the front office and coaching and players at the Orange Bowl. Not here. You know, now's when I think they're actually finally turning the corner. Big O, do you think the Miami Dolphins are going to be better than last year with all these new signings? Yes, I do. But let's see what happens in the draft and the rest of what's left. But I, they need to stay healthy. They stay healthy, they'll be definitely better. Remember, you can make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo. You can also make a Bitcoin donation on Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show. Frankie. Thank you for the love on the super chat. He says, Sean and Big O, uh, if WWE got a deal for Jordan style shoes, which wrestler should get a shoe that the fans would buy? Well, Frankie, I can't answer that question, dude. I'm not educated enough to know about, you know, the wrestlers and then their fan base and who's got the strongest fan base and who's, you know, I, I would go with a lazy uh, suggestion. I would say The Rock. Only because it's The Rock. But, Sean, dude, you're going to add a hell of a lot more intelligence to this conversation and logic to it. I don't I don't know wrestling enough to even answer that question if there's even a way of answering that question. So, Sean, you're the expert, bro. Answer it. I'd go with either Cody Rhodes or Roman Reigns right now. Those would be the two. And then The Rock, of course. You got CM Punk. I mean – Again, I just it's one of those three. That's the only three that that would that have a fan base that would buy a shoe. And I don't even know how you would do it in WWE style. I mean, the way you do the colors of they change colors so quickly. I mean, it's it's not like you know not the red like, light. Right? It'd be like Apple phones. You have one coming out every other week. Right. So yeah, and and I, I the Rock is a crossover because he's got the wrestling fans, and then he's got movie fans and regular fans. He, he also a, has his own shoe, huh? He already has his own shoe with Under Armour. Oh, okay, Project so Rock, the Project Rock shoes and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not surprised actually. By now, he should have his own shoe, considering who the hell he is, dude. That guy's so damn popular. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Ocala Joe. Thank you for the love. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you. Cash app or Venmo at cash. Big O show. That is cash. Big O show cash app or Venmo. Thank you. Ocala Joe. Very nice of you, sir. Appreciate you. By the way, where the hell is Bitcoin right now? 68.9. So we've had a dip here, actually. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Is this to a contract real or an April Fool's joke? I'm sure it's an April Fool's joke, bro. It's April 1st. Um, I mean, you... No doubt. You listen to this show a lot. You you should know. We kind of like, I told you this contract is going to take a little while, right? That it's probably going to be towards the X money that becomes free in June. So I don't think they really have enough money right now to do that deal. To give, you know, because it's going to be a small, it's going to be a big signing bonus. But the cap hit this year will be somewhere, I would imagine, between 5 to 10, you know, a, a lower number. But they don't have that under the cap right now to do that. So I think that when this deal gets done, it'll be done in June. 
that's when it'll be official. Okay, so yes, it is April Fool's that's going on out there. Okay, and again, this is what I would tell you, no doubt, what I would tell all of you out there. When you see Dolphin breaking news, see who's actually breaking it. If it's not a legitimate reporter, okay, you're not going to get it. It's all bullshit. Okay, 99% of YouTubers, no, 100% pretty much of YouTubers have no insight on the team. They're not media members. They have nothing, dude. So if you're not getting it from a real credible source and you're just getting it from some slap dick that purchased the, 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 the blue check mark and it's got, you know, 2000 followers or something and never has broken a story in his life. Why would you believe anything? Anybody, any of those kind of people would say, you tell me. So all these YouTubers out there, all they're doing is guessing. Okay. And by the way, a lot of the media members may not even have much insight either. Just so you'll know. They cover the team. They walk into the locker rooms. They talk to the players. But those players just give them the company lines when they open their mics and their pads and all that. Can they pull them aside? Can they get their phone numbers? Can they get a, a different conversation off to, off away from the building? No, they can't. Not at all. Do they get people in the front office, scouts, whatever, talking to them about stuff on this? No, they don't. So they're not even adding any real insight for you. They get the same thing you get from the press conferences. So you could decipher the same stuff that they do pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I would tell you, no doubt. Is it, is it Schefter reporting that? No, right? Am I reporting it? No. You know what I mean? Is it somebody credible? Is it Tom Pelissero? reporting then you know you can believe it but if it's ml football or some stupid shit like that what are you doing man what are you doing why are you even wasting your time with that person all they want is clickbait and they want to get their little thing retweeted so they could get a bunch of followers out of it don't understand why you would do that I really don't. Uh, Big O, is OBJ trying to get a contract like the second option player, a third option player? If Miami signs him, he's a fourth option until otherwise. Um, Dolphin 13, OBJ is dealing with the reality now that nobody is offering him big money anymore. Okay? Baltimore are a bunch of morons for giving him $15 million last year. Okay? Those days are done for OBJ. So wherever he signs, he will sign for a third of what he signed for last year. And it'll have some incentives so he can possibly make more. That's his reality. So what he's waiting for is possibly an injury, maybe desperation for another team, and then they have to overpay. But so far, nobody's had any injuries because you don't really have any mini camps going on or anything like that. So he's out there and he's deciding and dealing with his new reality. The new reality is nobody's offering OBJ a lot of money. That's the new reality, my friends. So it's nothing. This is the same thing as the Dalvin Cook or the Jonathan Taylor stuff. It, it's like you guys are more desperate and anxious than the Dolphins and Chris Greer are. We had a bunch of media members all over the country, <laughs> excuse me, and locally. <laughs> oh, Jonathan Taylor, Dalvin Cook. Oh, that, that'll be the difference. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to win it all. If you add those guys, we're going to win it all. That, that, that's it. it takes them to the next level. Chris Greer was, um, yeah, no, you guys are full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, we got our offer here, Dalvin. 
You want it? Take it. You don't? Brother, go to the Jets. Go wherever the hell you want to go. Oh, Jonathan Taylor's available. Sure. No problem. We'll make a deal for Jonathan. Yeah, but we're not giving you big money. Oh, yeah, but we're not giving you. No, no, no. Here, you want to take some salary off of us? What do you think? You're going to get a free ride? You're going to, you know, that's the problem with a lot of you out there. You're acting with the desperation like you're Mike Tannenbaum. Meanwhile, the guy that's actually running the team, he's like, you want to sign? Great. You don't? Brother, have a great life. I wish you the best. That's it. There's no panic here. There's no, They're not sitting here calling OBJ every day. Come on, sign with us. You're the thing that's going to... No, dude, no. Here's our offer. You want to help us? You want to compliment what we got going on? Great. We'd love to have you. You have another agenda? Hey, man, fantastic. Have a great life. So a lot of you need to, like, relax. This thing's under control, bro. Okay? You know? If you were going to get Jonathan Taylor, they were going to take back Emmanuel Agba. Okay? They were going to take back X. They were going to take back Christian Wilkins. They were going to take back Robert Hunt. They were going to take, well, maybe not Robert Hunt because he wasn't making big money yet. Um, but in other words, you were going to unload salary on their ass. Here, we'll give you Agba and Jeff Wilson. That's the kind of shit that needed to happen in order to bring Jonathan Taylor over and give him a $10, $12 million contract. The media and especially all these YouTubers, they don't know anything like that. They don't they don't know anything about this. So they just act like Joe Fan and they just want to get in your craw and try to tell you that, you know, Dalvin Cook and Jonathan Taylor and they're going to be so great. And oh, my God, the Dolphins need to make this deal now and all that same bullshit that goes on all the time. dude. So a bunch of people out there have zero insight on what's really going on and how it's really going on how it's be how how the how the bread's being made how the sausage is being made you know and that's that's the issue here with all of this relax there's there's no panic and they're not sitting there going oh my god we got to have obj we got to have dalvin cook we got to have jonathan no we'll add them but we'll add them on our terms we're not going crazy for them and that's what I keep trying to explain to a lot of you out there. So he has to deal with his reality. That's his reality. He doesn't have a big deal on the table at all from no one. Now, if somebody's stupid, it could happen. Okay. But I think there's a good chance he signs here. I really do. I really do especially when he sees the accuracy of the quarterback that he has here compared to what he had to play with last year. And he had to play in a running offense. Oh, have you ever been eight at boat campers, man? That place is uh, turning to shit. Really? Wow. That's some strong stuff, Hunter Butler. I've eaten there. I haven't eaten there in a couple years, but I always enjoyed boat campers food, dude. I, I think it's a, which one did you go to? Why, why you had a bad experience? Did you mention it? Cause they're pretty good about it, bro. Giovanni says you two playing five back to back to back nights at Bayfront park. Okay. 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 Fools. Yep. April fools. That's right. Miami cops are going to start pulling people over and giving offenders a Marlins ticket instead of a traffic ticket. Clearly that's a much bigger punishment says radio host. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is funny. Give him a Marlins state. You got to go to a Marlins game. No. Send me to traffic school. Not a Marlins game. No. Anything but that. I love it. Our number two of the program is next. Welcome, Welcome to Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. 
Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. Welton Rayom has more than 62 years of litigation experience handling insurance disputes. They're committed to resolving even the toughest insurance claims quickly. Call them for a free consultation. 954-966-4646. At Welton Rayom, they don't get paid unless you win. Property damage claims to your home, business, or condo as a result of a hurricane. Welton Rayom can help. Water, mold, fire, smoke damage, Welton Rayom can help. Call doorbell camera. Now you have a front row seat to your house getting robbed. No breaking into my house! Ooh, there goes the TV. I'm sure it'll turn up at the pawn shop. No, not the TV! Just because you can see them, that doesn't mean you can stop them. With slogans, you get 24-hour monitoring, a free home security system, and professional installation. Plus, free doorbell camera. One that'll actually work for you. Get out of my house! Get out of my house! Call 1-800-ALARM-ME. When presenting an award to an employee, athlete, executive, or fantasy GM, make sure you call Orvieto's Awards and more. For 35 years, these custom award specialists have been providing plaques, trophies, custom framing, while providing state-of-the-art laser and computerized engraving, UV printing, and glass crystal etching. They do all their engraving and printing in-house for quality control. Call Charles at 305-949-8098 or visit them at orvietosawards.com. Vieto's Awards and more, where recognition is rewarding. When you move, you need a reliable company led by passionate folks eager to assist its customers during a transitional process that needs to be smooth. Call Essential Moving Experts at 844-368-5750 for all your local and long-distance moving needs. You can rely on Essential Moving Experts. Mention the Big O Radio Show and get $150 off. Family owned and operated. They offer free 30-day storage, full service moving, fully licensed, bonded, and insured. Moving was never so easy. EssentialMovingExperts.com For over 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for ejdconstruction.com
opinions or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media group, Inc. ownership, management, sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. It's our number two. We'll be at the fair, by the way, this Wednesday. All right. April 3rd will be our final uh, broadcast. Three broadcasts out there, as always. They're open at weekdays at 4 o'clock. Weekends at noon. Uh, guests five and under and 65 plus will get in free every single day. Parking is free. They've got over 80 rides. They've got over 130 food stands. So go check it out, folks. They've got the, a new ride called the X drive. It's uh, hurls 16 riders through an exhilarating and electrifying ride experience. It provides head over heels excitement. The X drive is a midway thrill seeking dream come true. The X-Drive takes rides, riders, by the way, on a rotating, tumbling, and spinning journey up to 60 feet in the air. So go check it out. Hell of a hell of a ride. And man, the food out there is pretty cool. So uh, I gotta get me uh I gotta get me one more elephant ear on Wednesday. That'll be one of my two meals for the day. So I'm gonna have an elephant ear on Wednesday. I'm already planning ahead. Cause you got to cheat a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You got, you got to, you got to, you got to treat yourself along the way here. Uh, true fan fan. Thank you again for the love on the super chat. As always, I have zero worries with this front office and you should, shouldn't have any worries. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oscar says, I know we talked about it the other day. Mark my words at Sabador will continue their ways. They will be the next Cabo San Lucas or Costa Rica where Americans and other people will travel and move to. Oh yeah. It's already starting. It's already starting, bro. El Salvador is a place that you want to start to go visit and check it out. And if you're a crypto person, that's a great place because of the, the, the tax benefits. Um, Bukele has, you know, he's created a, a safe place now for, for Salvadorians. So they can actually, you know, move forward and grow as human beings instead of being a crime-ridden, gang-ridden. Look what's going on with Haiti. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's kind of the same. You know, a Bukele needs to take over in Haiti. That's really what it, those people have zero discipline. Those gangs, they abuse their own people. So those people can't be in charge. You know what I mean? It's you, you got to eliminate the shit is what you got to do. And that's exactly what El Salvador did. That guy came in and took a hard hand and and wiped it all out. And there's no more crime there. You know? And you don't want to be a criminal in El Salvador. I like that. I like scaring criminals. I, I think that's a good thing. I think we should inherit that kind of stuff. You know? We, we give criminals too many rights, too many breaks, too many options. They get, to get, they get to commit all kinds of crimes, go out on the street again, and then finally kill somebody. So... I am all for the Bukele way of going after crime. You know, I'm 57 years old. I have never had a hankering to hold up a bank, to assault somebody, to pistol whip somebody, to carjack, to whatever. I've never had that in 57 years. I need money. I go work. I'll get two jobs. I'll get three. But I'll work. You know what I'm saying? So the re I'm like you, like the rest of us. So, yeah. What's going on in El Salvador, Oscar, is amazing. And kudos to Bukele for you have to take that approach for that. That's how desperate that situation was that you had to do it. And by the way, that's what they have to do with Haiti. Same thing. Same damn thing. All these gangs and all that. No, bro, get rid of all these idiots. Throw them all in jails and clean up the place. And let people have a free and and safe environment so they can grow and work and thrive. You know? So they need a Bukele in Haiti. Badly. They need a Bukele in Haiti. You know what I'm saying? They certainly can't come up with their own leadership, unfortunately. 
So yeah, you are you are correct, Oscar. El Salvador is headed in absolutely the right direction. And they buy a Bitcoin every day. Every day they buy a Bitcoin. Every day. It's easy for a country to do it, but they're already up like $400 million. So they're going to have an amazing reserve for their country. You know, I don't know how Meli in Argentina is not doing the same thing. You know, he should be purchasing Bitcoin for their reserves. So it is what it is. Uh, let's see. The service is going downhill. The one on 595 near Canesware. Wow. I, that's the one I go to normally. I always have a great experience there. That's, that's, that's odd, bro. That's really, really odd. I, I've never had a bad experience at Bo Campers. I got I got to tell you, Hunter, that's got to be an outlier. It's got to be an outlier, bro. I've never had a bad experience at Bo Campers. So I uh, feel bad for you there, but, you know, maybe you should talk to a, a, a manager. You know, Big O, who's the best mascot in South Florida, in my opinion? No one tops Pablo Pelota. Miami High Alive mascot. Man, I I tend to lean to Bernie, bro. You know? And uh and especially the early days Bernie that had uh, you know, he was uh he had a he had a sense of humor. So, I'm going to go Bernie for the heat. That's my favorite mascot. Okay. Kind of grown. Uh, I've kind of grown to love Bernie. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Bernie, the mascot for the heat. That's mine. Uh, still living in the 80s is in the house. 2024 will be 1984. Big O. Catch my drift, Dolphin fans. There we go. I like it. We need to stop ragging on the Marlins. We're probably going to suck this year, but they've made the playoffs two out of the last four years. They have two championships. Same as, dude, Oscar, come on, bro. The bubble year, whatever, bro. It's a 60-game season. Who gives a shit about that? And last year, yeah, they made the playoffs and got spanked and sent home. You know, that's because they expanded it. You know, the Marlins try to win. I mean, the Dolphins try to win. The Marlins aren't trying, bro. They're just not trying. So um, I'm ripping the Marlins every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Okay. I'm never going to stop ripping the Marlins. I haven't stopped ripping the Marlins for years because they don't do anything right. So I'm not yet. I, I, I'm going Bukele on your ass. Okay. I'm eliminating every crime of trying to actually protect the Marlins. Okay, Oscar. So I'm throwing your ass in jail. Uh, Big O just picked up a great book, The Lost Guitar Hero, The Great Pretender, James Honey, Honeyman Scott. You really love him, man. Uh, Jay Gelf in Orlando, always good service at the plantation bow campers. I've walked out of the Fort Lauderdale location twice for bad service. Wow. Okay, now, now we're talking here. Okay, see, now that's another person call, you know, chiming in, and I know Jay personally. Um, so apparently the Fort Lauderdale location, which is the same one, right? That's the one he's talking about, right? Uh, cause that's, is that Davey or considered Fort Lauderdale? That's Fort Lauderdale, right? And that one, um, wow, that's effed up. So maybe it is, maybe it's gone backwards. I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't eaten there in a while. All I can tell you is I've never had a bad experience at Bow Campers and I enjoy their food and everything. So. That's it, it's kind of odd, but now that Jay came in with it, you know, that's like okay, and that's somebody I know. That's kind of uh, yeah, that's a yeah. Wow. Uh, Bernie took one of the took one for the team, broken jaw. <laughs> that's right. Um, Dolphin 13 says so many bad things can happen when the play is being called late to a needs 13, 15 seconds uh, allows more option. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that's of course. Yeah. I don't know if that's part of another conversation, but that's part of why I need McDaniel to get better as a, as a head coach. Cause he is absolutely terrible on game day. Marlins almost ruined Jeter's name. He ran out of there. 
Yep. Marlins do deserve all the ripping they can get Ray So I agree with you. Jonathan says, sad to see the Miramar Bow Camper location closed down for good. Yeah, I saw that one. And I love that location because that was the closest one to my house. Um, and I would go to that one or to the one by 595. That's usually the, the one on 595 is the one I've been to the most. But when I would go with the wife, we would go to the one in Miramar once in a while because that one's, you know, it's not too far of a drive for me. It's like a half hour drive. But it was a great bar. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. I can't answer stuff if I'm not there physically myself, you know, enjoying the food and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, let's get to our 3A Graphics Sports Calendar, Sean Stanley. Alan Blanco and the great people at 3A Graphics. I uh, look like I can now actually get my merchandise going here. I think I'm going to get it up this week finally because I'm walking and, and driving again. Not walking great, but I'm walking because the calf is... I, did I tell you guys I had a setback? I, I ended up getting... I had a slippage and I ended up getting a... Um, What's that called in my cafe? Um, oh, our blood builds up. It's a um, hematoma. What was it again? Hematoma. Hematoma. That's it. And so there. there today I have therapy at three o'clock, and my wife has been, you know, rubbing the shit out of that calf and rubbing the hematoma, hematoma, uh, as much as possible to break it up, man. And so the calf is loosening up a little bit, you know, but it's not there yet. But at least I can walk. I drove yesterday to kind of test it. So I'm getting my mobility back again. Uh, and, you know, these calf things take a, a little bit to recover from. So hopefully we'll get that going. But now that I can move, I can actually go get merchandise and then now put it up on the website and mail it and all that other stuff. You know, I didn't want to put it on my wife the last two months. She's been doing so much shit that I just did not want to put that burden on her too. You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to work on trying to get that up this week and get the merchandise, going shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff that we already have it made. I mean, you know, our designer, which I don't know if I can mention his name yet, but he's done a phenomenal job. And 3A Graphics is ready to print all this stuff. And you guys have been asking me about it. And I'm, you know. Obviously, we need it to help support the channel and everything, um, but there was no way I was going to do it. I put, put more of a burden on my wife, having to carry my ass for, you know, almost two months so I can recover from the stupid, you know, setback. So uh, now looks like I'll be able to get the damn merch up. So you'll be able to see Alan Blanco's great work in custom printing and embroidery. But if you need uniforms or shirts or hats, your business, your company, your fantasy league, Please call Alan Blanco. Tell him that we sent you 786 618 1443. Heat defeat the Wizards uh, 119 to 107. They also defeated Portland on Friday night 142 to 82. They've got the Knicks tomorrow at 7 30. Uh, Saturday, the uh, Panthers survived against Detroit in a shootout 3 to 2. Barkov had two goals. Tonight, they will uh, visit Montreal at 7 o'clock. Sadly, on Friday, um, damn it, man. Or Saturday, I'm sorry. Uh, NSU lost the Division II championship to Minnesota 88 to 85, man. MJ Araldi had 25 points. Shane Hunter had 19. That that turnover at the end was just the absolute killer, man, for them. I felt terrible for them. I really did. Inter Miami and NYCFC played to a 1 1 draw on Saturday night. Luis Suarez scored in the 15th minute. And then had like 87 other chances and could not score. Marlins got swept by the sorry-ass Pirates. They lost all four games over the weekend. Tonight, they will start a set against the Angels. Chase Silseth taking on Max Meyer. All right? There we go. That is your 3A graphics sports calendar. All right? You guys criticizing Bo Camper? Stop going there. Go to Chico's in Hialeah, best service in town. They do have great service. And, dude, I got to tell you something, Frankie. I've been thinking about that Palomilla from Chico's since last week when I had it. Was it Thursday when I went to Hialeah Park? 
And I can't get the taste of that Balomia out of my mind. Like it's it's almost like I'm I I I'm dying to drive back over there. And you know what I'm gonna do? Maybe I'll do it on Thursday again. What the hell? Right after Hialeah Park, when I get off the air, maybe I'll just drive over to Chico's and treat myself again to another Palomia, Moro, and Maduros. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it because, damn, that was so good. That was so good. That was the best Palomia I've had in years. God, it was seasoned so good. So good. I cannot stop thinking about that Chico's Palomia. Okay? Like, I would drive from West Kendall to Chico's just to have that. No problem. I would do it. So I, I cannot stop thinking about Chico's in Hialeah. Cannot. Wow. It's like, since I went there again last week for the first time since the 80s, it's like, wow. Why, why have I not come here every once in a while? At least every couple of months, stop by here and treat myself. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm a Dolphins first type of guy, but for me, the best mascot is the U mascot. Oh, Ibis. That's pretty good. Oh, what's the last day of the fair? I'll be down visiting. I think it's the 7th, I want to say, sir. April 7th. Yes, sir. April 7th is the last day. Okay. I'll be down visiting with the family next, next week. Was considering taking the little guy. Till April 7th, you have, my friend. Uh, if Inter Miami is getting ragged on, even after bringing world talent, trying to win, best believe Marlins will get. Oh yeah, yeah, because Inter Miami's defense is terrible, dude. Jesus Christ, it's top heavy. No offense to the new guy inside, but Bernie Fire has never been the same since Riley fired Wes after the Puerto Rico event. It's true, it's true. But that's still my favorite. I'm still gonna go with old Bernie. Uh, <clears throat> they've been around less than the heat and the dolphins and most teams would die for what they've accomplished. Yeah. Oscar, that, that shit don't fly, bro. None of that shit flies. Okay. The Marlins have been a shitty organization forever. They were only a good organization when they had Dave Dombrowski, Dave Dombrowski built the 97 team. And then in the fire of 98, the fire of 98, he built the 2003 team. So it was one guy. That's it. The Loria and company, they added Pudge, Pierre. Um, what was the name of that pitcher from the from the A's? Um, God, I think it's with an O, actually. They added only a couple of pieces, right? They even traded for Rubina which in the end, they probably didn't need him, and they gave away Gonzalez for him. So really, it was all Dombrowski that got Cabrera and Lee and Lowe and, and uh, Beck Beckett and, and A.J. Burnett and Penny, and he, he got all those players. Luis Castillo, all that, that was his guy. Luis wasn't ready in 97, so they used... Um, You know who the the former Milwaukee manager? What's his name? The anyway, uh, cross at home plate. I remember or whatever. Uh, so, you know, and then Castillo was mature and ready for two thousand and three. You know, all those guys were Dombrowski guys, dude. Every one of them was Dombrowski guys, pretty much. They sprinkled in like four players, five players that they added to the team. That's it. So let's not let's not make it sound like these Marlins and oh my no dude it was just Dave Dombrowski who is the greatest GM of our of our generation my generation I'm 57 there is no GM that comes close to Dave Dombrowski none nada nay okay Theo came pretty close because what he did with Boston and, and the Cubs are amazing but uh, you're watching Dombrowski do it with so many teams it's just it, it's just ridiculous to watch him do it with that many teams now. Okay, that's how great that guy is. So really, it was just a small window with one GM and one moment, and that's it. And they've never tried after that, my friend. So let's, you know, 
Va, Oscar, tú hablas español, ¿no? Vamos a dejar las pajas mentales para otro día. ¿Entiende? ¿Ok? La paja mental, déjalo para otro día. ¿Ok? Because your, your Marlins theory es una paja mental. ¿Ok? Mental masturbation. Es paja mental. ¿Ok? That's all you're giving me. Bullshit. That has nothing to do with the reality that they don't try at all, bro. ¿Ok? So nobody cares about being the Marlins. ¿Ok? They got lucky that they have Dave Dombrowski. End of story. That's it. End of story. Lucky they had Dave Dombrowski. After that, finito. It's over. There's nothing else to talk about with the Marlins. So nobody, absolutely nobody wants to be the Marlins. Nobody cares about the Marlins. Um, been dealing with right shoulder impingement. Did a, a physical therapy chiropractor, whole VA, just says surgery at this point, losing sleep, affecting mental health. I hate this. Yeah, I got to tell you, Ryan, I um, I kind of, I don't feel it as bad as you. Uh, but yeah, that first month with my whole leg shit and being in a bed and being in a bed for almost two months, it, it's, Wow. It drives you crazy. Have, no, having no mobility and not having the freedom of being able to move around. Wow, that is frustrating, dude. Frustrating as hell. So I, I to a small extent, I feel you. And and sleeping, yeah, brother. I have I have trouble sleeping with pain. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a guy that takes the, the dope. I don't like to do it. You guys know that already. I've talked about it. I don't like taking painkillers. They gave me a bunch of Percocets. Remember I told you I took one of them and I said, nah, I'm, nah, no good. I'm not doing it anymore. So I'll deal with the pain. And then obviously it gets in your way of your sleep and all that. So yeah, yeah. And then on top of all of that, I decided to start a lifestyle change slash diet, however you want to look at it, while I was in bed. Which you figure while you're always in bed, you what are you going to do? Eat and watch television, right? And just get fatter. And uh, somehow or another, I got way skinnier um, because I just chose to fast instead. And uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. So let's see. Let's see. My opinion, the only running back was worth decent contract was Henry. After that, put him in the bathroom. Big, I know you probably talked about it, but did you talk about this dumbass clickbait about Tua getting traded? No, I don't talk about stupid shit. Steven, I don't talk about anything that is not real. That's for all these sites that have nothing else to do. I'm a talk show. I'm not, I'm not forced to only talk Miami Dolphins or Miami Heat. That's usually what happens to those writers and those bloggers or YouTubers or whatever, and you're stuck talking about the dolphins every single day, you have to talk about stupid shit that doesn't even make any sense or it's not even true. Or you're talking about hypotheticals. If you watch this show long enough, you know I don't screw around with hypotheticals. And I don't deal with fake stories. I crush them. That's what we do on the show. We bring you to reality and tell you, no, 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 no. This is what's really going on. The other stuff is bullshit. So, no. Why would I talk about something that has no truth to it whatsoever? Think about that. And why are you watching, reading, listening to anybody that does that? That's the question I have for you, Stephen. Why are you watching or reading about breaking stories from someone that never breaks stories? And why do you keep watching or reading them? 
why do you keep watching or reading people that come up with fake hypotheticals? Why? Do you like wasting your time? You don't have other things to do? You don't have better people to follow that actually have like credibility, that actually have like real access? They actually talk to players and agents and front office personnel and coaches. Do you, you, you talk, do you read about people like that? Because I'm sure, Stephen, the guy that or woman that reported uh, Tua traded to the Vikings has zero credibility. Never breaks any stories. But it's got to fill space because there's nothing to talk about. You know what there is to talk about? Raheem Mostert, his two-year extension. That's what happened over the weekend. That's about it. There's nothing else to talk about with the Dolphins. I keep reiterating that and asking all of you, why do you keep doing this to yourselves? Why do you keep following people that break no news whatsoever? Because I'm sure, Stephen, that person has never broken a story in their lives. So why? Don't get it. Don't understand that. Thank you, uh, musician. Thank you, sir. The diet is working. The lifestyle change is working. Now I got to stay with it. That's really, that's really my problem. Okay. I got to stay with it. That's the hard part. It breaks my heart that the Marlins don't even try. The 03 team is what got me into sports. There you go. Devin Jordan, happy birthday to Sean Taylor. Rest in peace. Yeah. I love the Marlins 03 team. Yeah, that was a fun team, wasn't it? Diet will heal a lot of stuff. Yeah, I hope so, man. We are what we eat and absorb. I certainly, I've certainly been that, my friend, for many years. You saw it on Facebook. There you go. There you go, Stephen Harris. Facebook. Like, come on, dude. You know? You saw it on Facebook. Think about what you just said. That 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 alone should, you know, kind of... It uh, <laughs> should be a... a what's that called? A, a, a signal. Cutter's Edge Pro, baby. William Quigley and the folks, they do it all at Cutter's Edge Pro. And listen, just not landscaping, but also maintenance, because that's one thing I want to remind you guys, because we talk about the landscaping and the job they did on our, on our property, whether it was the landscaping, trees, flowers, all of that. But then there's artificial turf, right, which is another thing that you've got to worry about. They do irrigation. So sprinkler systems, all that, lighting, outdoor lighting, they, they do it all, folks. And then maintenance. Maybe some of you already have some, you know, some landscaping that you like, and but it needs to be, you know, kept up and maybe, you know, spruced up a little bit. Call the folks at Cutter's Edge Pro, 954-472-0622. Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, it doesn't matter. They've got like 70 trucks. Huge company, man. William Quigley, Mike, all the great people. They'll take care of you. Trust me, man. Tree trimming and removals, landscape design, outdoor lighting, irrigation, synthetic turf. If you have dogs, the synthetic turf is absolutely amazing. And I got to tell you, man, and and uh, you, when you add landscaping, it adds value to your home. So reach out to the great people at Cutter's Edge Pro. They will get it done for you and tell them that Big O sent you. Dade, Broward, or Palm Beach counties. Take your home and property business HOA complex to the next level by calling Cutter's Edge Pro, where you can expect excellence. All right, all right, all right. So we've got um, Rasheed Rice. Has, has he turned himself in yet, Sean? Have you heard anything? Obviously, because I've been on air here for an hour and 40 minutes, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. If he uh, if he's uh, turned himself in, but wow, all that video and everything that went on this weekend, trying to avoid that DUI, 
crash in Dallas, six cars. They got the videos. They got the pics. And by the way, when you're running, you're guilty as hell. That's for sure. You know, when you run away after running over a fan after a Dolphins game and then go home to shower and have coffee so then you could talk to the cops, yeah, you know, some dirty Sanchez went on there. So when you're running like Rasheed Rice, there's a reason why you're running. I wonder how many of you got what I just said. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so that, that Rasheed Rice. Well, um, yeah, I think Kansas City will be drafting more than one wide receiver this year. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Like, how stupid can you be? That is, that's really the question. Ah, oh, man. Anyway, uh, the Inter-Miami game was frustrating as hell on Saturday, I got to tell you. Luis Suarez may have had 800 opportunities to score a second and a third goal. They easily should have won that game, okay? I mean, Luis, you know, and I'm thinking about this. Luis Suarez should have used his head on the rest of the attempts because the only one he scored on was a header. Every every other one he was uh, uh, apparently his foot was drunk. That was a frustrating game to watch, dude. Uh, how Leo? How how Luis Suarez, Leo? How Luis Suarez did not score a second and third goal is beyond me. Man, that was frustrating. Anyway, they've got Monterey the next two Wednesdays, so this Wednesday it'll be the Concacaf Champions Cup against Monterey. And then Saturday, they go back to the MLS schedule. And then Wednesday, they're back at it again. So don't expect Messi to play ne this Saturday. I would imagine if he plays this Wednesday, which I think he will, uh, and then he'll play a week later again because there's no reason to play him three days later. You just can't do that. And by the way, I'd like to hold off Suarez too. You know? You're... What you did with Messi, you're now doing with Suarez, you dummies. Okay? He's an old player. He doesn't need to play that many minutes. He cannot. Use somebody else. I'm sorry. But if you want him to last the whole season, you can't keep overplaying him. So I, I, I hope, because now you played him on Saturday, now you're going to play him again on Wednesday. I'm not a fan of that. And I know you I know you're playing for the CONCACAF. I get it. So why not sub him out in the 60th minute or something at least? I don't I didn't understand that one to be quite honest. And now I would hope he's not going to play the following Saturday along with Messi. And Busquets too. And Alba. All these old guys, bro, you can't keep milking this shit. They're going to get injured. They're going to break down like Messi has because you had a stupid preseason where you're traveling all over the damn world. I don't know how it is that I see this and I'm an idiot. I don't know anything compared to these people. But it's common sense. Not impressed with Tata. That's all I can tell you. Uh, Dogecoin doing really well. I don't know why. It's all Elon because there's nothing about Dogecoin that really makes any sense. Stick with the diet, bro. I'm reversing kidney failure through diet change. Good for you, man. Good for you, my friend. Uh, that reference went over my head, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I figured that. Um. Back years ago, we had uh, Rick Sanchez. Uh, he's a uh, newscaster. And so he was kind of um, busted for 
running over a fan after I believe it was an Eagles Dolphins game. He ran over a fan who he put into a coma. He didn't stay around. He went back home, showered and everything, probably sobered up a little bit, drank some coffee or whatever, and then talked to the cops. Guy later died. So Rick Sanchez killed a guy drunk getting out of a game, allegedly. And um, so that's kind of the dirty Sanchez reference. So, you know, you got to kind of know the town and the history and everything going on in order to kind of pick up on that. So, yeah. So you run because you're guilty. And Rick Sanchez ran because he was guilty. You know, that's why you run. That's why you avoid. That's why you delay. That's why you, you know, try to do whatever you can to stave off, you know, the price you have to really pay. That inter tie felt like a loss. I'm just tired of the team. It looks so out of rhythm and lost uh, and lost whenever Messi doesn't play. There's more than enough talent to at least beat a bad team. Well, but you don't, the coach is not making a difference. You know? That's like the Dolphins were so injury riddled the last two years in the playoffs that you need a Spo or Shula to pull off a victory in the playoffs. But Mike McDaniel is no Spo and no Shula. So he's not a very good game day coach. And neither is Tata Martino so far. I can't say I'm impressed with Tata Martino. Can't. So that's kind of the way I would look at it. Big O, you can really see your results. My boss has lost 53 pounds, too. Great job, fellas. Nice. Good for you. Good for him, man. That is awesome. 53. Wow. That is awesome. I remember Rick Sanchez. Whatever happened to him? Did he end up doing any time for killing that guy? No, he did not. He did not. So, there you go. Anyway. Um. You guys, uh, of course, you can make a donation, by the way, through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O Show. Uh, no real breaking news or anything going on right now, unfortunately. I would love for something good to happen, but uh, nothing is happening. Best thing that happened was uh, Mostert getting re-signed by the Dolphins over the weekend. Two-year extension worth $9.1 million, $3.71 is guaranteed. So they extend this contract another year, which is fantastic. I have no problem with that, uh, Mostert and, and uh, Achan. I just would like to see Brooks become a bigger part. I still think you need a little bit more punch coming. Okay? So that's where... That's where I think you need in the running game a little more punch. So hopefully Chris Brooks becomes a bigger part of it. Uh, but outside of that, folks, it's, you know, it, it's about uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. And it's about J.C. Latham. It's about uh, uh, Troy uh, Fautau or whatever, uh, Fautanu, Fautanu. It's about Brian Murphy. It's about draft picks. Okay, Amarius Mims, the Georgia kid. That's what it's about. Okay, it's about a tackle, a guard, a pass rusher at 21. That's what we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks. You know, that's really what it's all about right now. Uh, and then we wait to see if Odell makes a decision in the next couple of weeks by the end of this week or maybe next week or something like that? Or does he hold off and and wait for some desperate team to offer something? You know? I don't know. We shall see. By the way, Bitcoin's at 68,673. Okay? Final four is set. We've got NC State and Purdue and Alabama and UConn on Saturday. And uh, Purdue has opened up as a nine-point favorite over NC State. And 
UConn is an 11 and a half point favorite over number four, Alabama. And now they now now they want Burns to play uh, tackle. Is that what the football people are talking about? I'll tell you what, the NC State kid, the big man Burns, he's got some touch. That's the that, that's what I was impressed with the most. Because you drive with power when you're a force, but then you have to then have touch to put English on the ball so it doesn't clank off the rim and off the you know like a lot of guys do. Because the power in their bodies is follow, following through with their shot. And the Burns kid, no matter where he was going, he had touch around the rim. It's, it's pretty sweet to see. And then what's the um, uh, uh, Edie, the other big man that had 40 points for Purdue? That's a big dude, bro. That is a big dude. Anyway, so I saw some of that over the weekend. I was uh that was pretty cool. It was fun. I mean, I'm you know, I'm not that big of a college basketball guy anymore and all that, but watching uh especially the Burns kid, I really enjoyed watching the Burns kid play. I thought that was uh that was mighty impressive. All right, let's uh let's get to a little music history. Um, in 1985, on this date, David Lee Roth left Van Halen to pursue a solo career on April Fool's Day. David Lee Roth, April Fool's Day. Eh. In 61, the Beatles began a three-month residency at Hamburg's Top Ten Club. The band played 92 straight nights, performing seven hours a night on weekdays and eight hours a night on weekends. During that time, the Fab Four lived in an attic above the club. Uh, in 2007, Modest Mouse topped the album charts with We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank, which featured a new band member, former Smiths guitarist, Johnny Marr. In 2000, Santana started a nine-week run at number one on the singles charts with Maria Maria. In 2001, Crazy Town had the number one song in the country with Butterfly. Good song. In 1970, an April Fool's joke, John Lennon and Yoko Ono announced in a press release that they planned on undergoing dual sex operations. And there you go. That's what happened today in music history. Let's go with some famous birthdays today. YouTuber. This one I know. Logan Paul is 29. Uh, Randy Orton. Sean is 44 years old. I know that's legit. Even oh, I know Randy Orton. That's legit, and he's fighting Logan Paul at WrestleMania. Oh, wow. And they both share a birthday. That is very cool. Did you know that? But you didn't know that. I Hello, did not know that. You have taught me something today. There you go. You learn something every day on this program. Susan Boyle, the pop singer, is 63 Debbie Reynolds was born in this date in 32. We lost her in 2016. Uh, let's see. Sean Taylor, of course, we talked about that. Born in this date in 83. We lost him in 2007. Rest in peace, Sean. Uh, who else? Uh, Brooke Lopez, basketball player, 36. And um, that's it. Those are the folks celebrating birthdays today. And by the way, the Powerball now will move up. Monday's Powerball jackpot will be worth $975 million after zero players matched all six numbers during the $935 million drawing on Saturday night. So if you want to play the Powerball, it is up to $900 million. Make sure you get in there. Okay? All right. That's about it. Yep. That's uh, it's pretty much music and entertainment. It's nothing really else that is earth shattering or breaking news. Black Keys announced a fall tour. Oh, okay. I just got that. If you're a Black Keys fan, 
they have announced a fall tour of North America. They will start in Tulsa on September 17th, Dallas the 20th of uh, September. We got any, no Florida dates, folks. No Florida dates. You lucky bastards in Charlotte, October 16th, Atlanta, October 19th, Philadelphia, October 21. Baltimore, November 2nd, Boston, November 1st, New York, October 30th. There's more dates, but I just threw a, some of them out there. So just in case, if you're a Black Keys fan, you'll get an opportunity to see the Black Keys. Just not in Florida. You will not see the Black Keys. What else do we have? Uh, Mims is the guy. I woke up to it coming on and like, w, what the F? And how did they use Adam on this? Terrible. Adam Schefter, why? What happened? I don't get it. What happened? What what, what did Jimmy Zurich do? Ha ha, April Fool. Sorry, guys. Oh, you fell for something? Oh, 56 million. Oh, okay. You, you fell for it. Yeah, there's no. It's April Fool's Day, bro. What's wrong with you, Jimmy? What's wrong with you? By the way, you're listening to this show. Okay? If it was legit, we would be talking about it. I think that's the way you guys got to look at it, bro. If we're talking about it, it's legit. If we're not talking about it. Right? If we're not talking about it, then it must not be legit. That's all you got to do. Oh, this bullshit. Well, wait a minute. Let me go to O. Is he talking about it? Is he tweeting about it? No. Oh, so that can't be true. That's all. It's pretty simple. I call the bullshit before the bullshit even happens. So if you're watching my show and I'm not talking about a new to a contract, then there's no to a contract. It's pretty simple. Dalvin Cook's not coming here until I tell you he's coming here. You know what I mean? Or Jonathan Taylor. Or whoever. Or Odell Beckham. So just tune into our show and then we'll, if we're addressing it, then it's legit. If we're not addressing it, clearly it's not legit. Okay. That's all you got to do. Uh, yes, sir. No, I'm saying also if they're, if they're referencing Adam Schefter, Adam Schefter should have posted something. Right. Of course. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the other thing. Like I'm looking to see if any of our insiders or Schefter or anybody like that is posting anything. So far, nothing. they've stayed quiet. It's not nothing, bro. Nothing's gone on for a while now for the Dolphins. Nothing. The last time something went on, we told you about it, right? It was Odell Beckham. We gave you the skinny. We told you. You know, Odell, and we told you no imminent deal. That's it. Everything's been exactly like what we told you. We told you, hey, you know what would be a good option for them? Odell Beckham. Then hours later, Odell Beckham arrives. And then we tell you, hey, no imminent deal. And guess what? Over a week later, no imminent deal. You know, so not for nothing, but we're, we're way more on target than anybody else when it comes to really South Florida sports, but especially the Miami Dolphins especially the Miami Dolphins. So that's the way you got to handle things, Jimmy. Check it out here first. And if I'm not tweeting about it or talking about it, if I'm not reporting it, if I'm not talking about it on the show, then there's no substance to it. Okay? Uh, you suggested the Finns shouldn't give to a contract, but the cap situation at the moment will force the Finns to offer him a contract with the new changes. Does the Finns change? Their no, they're going to give him a contract. They have to give him a contract. They have to move on. He's the guy. He's not the problem, as I keep saying. Could you have held out for him to play on the fifth year? Sure, you could do that. But you need the cap space, and you got to re-sign guys next year. So you got to do this stuff. 
Okay. And he's not the problem. The injuries and Mike McDaniel are the main two issues for the Miami Dolphins. Not the front office, not Tua. It's been the injuries and Mike McDaniel. So, yeah, you, you could have at the beginning, right when the season ended, right when the game ended, I said, well, you could hold out and, and make him play on the fifth year. But then when I started to think about the all the money and all the players that are available, and then I was looking at this wave of players and the next wave of players, you can't do that. Fiscally, you just cannot do that. You have to sign him now. Can't hold out. So you have to sign him now. So it will happen. I think it'll happen in June. I think they're working it all out. And then when the X money becomes available, then they'll have a bunch of money and then they can use some of it for Tua and anything else that they may need. So, yeah, that's what I think is happening. That's just my guess right now. Okay. So I keep saying that this thing will drag out into June. And I've been saying that for a while now. So uh, your suggestion was done at the end of the season to be clear. Yeah. Right, right at this end. And then I said, nah, not going to happen. They're going to give him the contract. So, and I've been telling you for a while, they're going to give him the contract, but this will take a while to work out. Herbert and Burrow got theirs and played like crap. Right. Well, Herbert, I mean, uh, Burrow can't even stay healthy anymore. That's a real problem for, for Burrow. Okay. He's injury prone. Right. I mean, that's what we have to say about Joe Burrow now. Right? If you're going to say it about Tua, Joe Burrow is injury prone. That Those are the facts. You know? Uh, any chance we would put McDaniel on the injured reserve list if he doesn't improve his head coach? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Casey ran the ball against San Francisco 30 times for 130 yards. San Fran ran the ball 31 times for 110 yards. McCaffrey touched the ball about 30 times. Both teams executed and played solid defense. Yes, but we don't dedicate ourselves to the run enough. And that hurts your, that hurts your, uh, that hurts your team. That hurts your quarterback. That hurts your offense. You know, that's the problem. So, you know. well, guys like you, 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 you can't force another damn rebuild on this fan base. They needed to sign guys like Soler or JD or anything. You can't trade to them at the deadline. If this team still sucks, they didn't even make an effort to be competitive. Yeah, exactly. But that's who they are, unfortunately. You know? Uh, what do we have here? Remember, you can make a donation through Cash App or Venmo at Cash Big O Show. That is Cash Big O Show, Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O Show. And uh, you can always make a Bitcoin donation. All right, folks. Seems like we've uh, run out of time. Uh, there is no more. That is it. I think I've uh, spoke my piece. There's really nothing going on um, at all, like big news, to be quite honest. Uh, it's one of those slow days. It continues to be slow days, actually. Every single day has been a slow day, unfortunately. Uh, we uh, appreciate all out there. We thank, of course, Acura of Pembroke Pines, proud sponsor of our program. Make sure you visit our great sponsors. And, folks, it is a new month. And they have got great deals going on right now at 15601 Pines Boulevard. The 2024 Integra is $299 a month. The RDX 2024 is $419 a month. The MDX is $489 a month. And you can get 1.9% financing for 36 months. So get on down there to 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 and Pines. Tell them that Big O sent you. They'll take care of you at the finest dealership in the business. That is Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines. And do also want to remind you, Hialeah Park, a proud sponsor of our program. We still have the $100 No Regret First Bet going on. Use our QR code or go to the Hialeah website if you're listening to the podcast. Go to Hialeah Park and open up your, uh, your account. If you already have a Hard Rock account, don't use the same phone number or email. Use a different one. 
Okay. And then open it up. You'll get your free $100 no regret first bet. Yeah, you can make a bet tonight for the uh, Panthers against Toronto, right? Or you got the final four later this week. So you got all kinds of stuff that you can, you know, wager on at the Hialeah Park website. So check it out. And uh, we will be there at Hialeah on Thursday and maybe Chico's also. I think I am. There's no maybe. I think I am going to go to Chico's right after Hialeah Park again. Yeah. Why don't you all meet me out there? Anybody live uh, close to Hialeah? Thursday. About uh, about 5 o'clock. Five, about 5.30. We'll meet over at, at Chico's. Love to meet a bunch of you out there at Chico's. Have some fun. Have some great Cuban food. Do that on Thursday. Love it. That would be actually cool if a bunch of you show up to Chico's. And if you've never tried their food, you're you're going to thank me for it because, damn. I don't know how I stayed away from that place that long. That was a huge mistake on my part. Huge mistake on my part. That was some good Cuban food, dude. Man, that was good. All right, we will see you all tomorrow. Same time. Same place. Same bat channel.